terms of loss and damage, um, the operationalization of the few funding um, arrangements, um, including the fund to respond on loss and damage, is a success. Um, and also in the decision, it also recognizes that the fund established um, to respond to loss and damage um, with focus on um, addressing loss and damage for developing countries that are most vulnerable uh, to the impacts of um, climate change. Um, and also recognizing uh, the response to economic and non-economic loss and damage associated uh, with the adverse effects um, of climate change, um, including extreme weather events uh, and slow onset events. It also acknowledges um, and stresses that parties should, when taking action to address climate change, also needs to respect, um, promote and consider the respective obligations on human rights, uh, the right to clean, health and sustainable um, environment, the right for persons with disabilities and people with vulnerable, um, in vulnerable situations, and right to development as well as gender equality, empowerment of women and intergenerational equity. Um, the operationalization of the Santiago Network was also seen as a success um, in establishing the institutional arrangements um, for the network to enable its full operationalization, including supporting the mandated um, role in catalyzing um, the technical um, assistance, including supporting its approaches at local, national and regional um, level for developing countries. Um, however, the success, unsuccessful bid of it is there's still unclear um, agreement on firm obligation on how these funds will be filled. Um, and the current amount uh, that the loss and damage fund has is not enough to really address the loss and damage that is happening across the globe. Um, furthermore, the host of the funding will be with the World Bank. Um, unfortunately, the question we as developing countries uh, ask is how easily can these funds be accessible for us? Because we have noted that in our previous um, funds for mitigation and adaptation, this, in accessing these funds, it's also very difficult for us. And how is this um, having the funding posted under World Bank is going to be any different from that? So this is still the um, challenging bit of it. For just transition, as I would like to acknowledge that the developed countries have um, have agreed um, to transition away from fossil fuel. Although we would like to acknowledge that phasing away is an achievement, but maybe that is an achievement for the rich countries. But to us as small uh, island developing countries, we, have, we don't have the time to wait um, while they transition away. So definitely this um, agreement is not strong enough to limit the 1.5 or full phase out of fossil fuel that we want. There are still loopholes in the text that will allow fossil fuel emitters um, to continue polluting and their timeline is still indifferent. And also there is no funding attached for um, developing countries. With, uh, to support them in their transition and that could mean further debt and inequality for us. To begin with, Loss and Damage Fund became operational on day one, which was a pleasant and unexpected surprise for many. Although the pledges of just above 700 million US dollars is just a drop in the ocean. At least something or we have something to work with. The presidency in his opening speech also placed 100 million um, dollars towards loss and damage funds, providing a significant boost to the loss and damage thematic negotiators in their efforts to complete and finalize proposed text. And for the first time ever, 
after lengthy debates and negotiations on the most heated topics of this COP, fossil fuels are mentioned in the final <coughs> COP28 text highlighting a need to transition away from them. Views on this will always differ among countries and participants. Any places of funds won't be high enough for some and weddings will not be strong enough for many. In relation to our Wasser Damage Fund, um, uh, we've known that Pacific Civil Society is one of the key asks um, is the operationalizing of the Wasser Damage Fund. Um, Pacific Civil Society has been um, advocating and, and amplifying um, this um, message in the lead up to COP28. And on the first day of COP28, um, parties have agreed um, for the operationalizing of the Wasser Damage Fund. seen um, parties um, also agreeing for um, and identifying a host for the Santiago Network uh, on Mass and Damage Fund, um, which is also one of the key um, asks for, for civil societies, and we've seen that it was accomplished um, um, during COP28. Um, and also in terms of phase out of fossil fuel, um, which is also one of the um, six years old um, key ask as well. Um, however, uh, COP28 um, has decided upon um, instead of phasing out of fossil fuel but um, transitioning away um, um, from fossil fuel. Um, and although this might not be what the Pacific Civil Societies um, uh, wanted, but it is a step closer to renewable and clean energy.